Oh, it's going really slow. Oh, there we go. Hello and welcome to an In Conversation with. My name is Emma Smith and I'm absolutely delighted today to be in conversation with Gail Gregory. Gail, thank you so much for giving your time. Hi. Yes, thank you for inviting me. Well, you're very welcome. Um, so our plan for today is um, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on Empowered Conversations and then I'm going to hand over to Gail to share her story and as always we'll have some time for questions and answers so on your screen you should have if you want to ask a little question it's like a little speech bubble with a question mark in it so at any point you can pop your question in there and then we'll pick them up once Gail's finished talking if that's okay all right so if you haven't um been to one of these before empowered conversations sorry i'm a project manager for empowered conversations it's an age uk salford project and we deliver communication courses for family caregivers and also professionals across greater manchester we also do one-to-one -one dementia therapeutic support for caregivers um, in salford and Every so often we do a little webinar like this. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, Gail, I think that's all I need to say. You're right if I hand over to you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's it's so wonderful to be here. And today I thought I would talk about um, how I've adapted and how I live positively with dementia. So a little bit about me. I was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's um, in 2019 at the age of 54. We, we, we noticed I, I was struggling um, with running my own business and everyday tasks, but it wasn't just about forgetting, it was about the, the word finding and the long pauses and the, the blanks in my brain and my ability to multitask just completely disappeared and i was well known for multitasking um so all the, the changes that was happening we, we just put down to stress but they didn't get better and they didn't go away and it was becoming a problem especially when running a business alone so we decided we'd have a trip to the doctor and that's where a few simple memory tests were carried out um, and then he decided I needed a referral to the to the memory clinic. And that's when we started the, the long diagnosis process um, of going through tests and blood tests and scans. Eventually, I, I did receive my diagnosis, which was um, February the 14th, Valentine's Day. Um, and the diagnosis was early onset Alzheimer's. Um, me and my husband were, were totally shocked and um, yeah, it affected me pretty badly and I, I became uh, depressed for quite some time. And it, it's funny because when you get your diagnosis, you don't instantly change, but I lost friends, a lot uh, neighbors ignored me. Um, and I suppose really I, I lost a little bit of myself. And then, we had a decision to make about whether I could carry on working because I was a sole trader. Was I able to carry on doing my job? So it was just something else to rock the boat. So when I handed over my business, um, which was Bears for You, um, and I embroidered teddy bears for all different occasions, um, and I'd worked really hard to build up that business, and it had taken me many years to create a good business. I was heartbroken when, when I had to let it go. So I was left with no business and, and a diagnosis of, of Alzheimer's. So no wonder I was depressed. But then something changed um, and I got my fight back. And I thought, well, just because I've had to give up my business, well, it doesn't mean that that's the end. And just because I'd received a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, that didn't mean the end either. So I started to turn things around and I made it a new chapter and I called it my dementia chapter. And it was the start of something new. So now I'd, I'd actually accepted that I'd, I'd got Alzheimer's so I could concentrate on the things that I still could do. 
uh, like my crafts and my card making. So I made lots of cards and I shared how to do it all online on uh, YouTube. And we went into lockdown. So people were, were quite welcoming with all the cards and we, we shared online as well. Um, some cards had intricate folds and you might think, well, how does she remember how to do all this? Well, I have a craft room and in my craft room, I have little notes with measurements and how to make the folds and I've made videos as well. Because I do forget, so it's, it's a good memory aid. So these are just some of the cards that I've made and these are the watercolour cards which I paint now. Um, I had plenty of time on my hands now and I did question what was my purpose in life going to be now? What I didn't realise was my crafts would lead to so much more. And I was beginning to realise that there was a lot of things that I still could do. So I'm going to concentrate on those and forget about the things that I can't do. Because they're all in the past now. So my crafts became very, very important. And by incorporating arts and crafts into my daily life, I was hoping that I would keep my brain active and engaged. So every day I decided I would start with an early morning walk, joined with my four-legged friend Toby and my camera. And after a good dose of fresh air, I'd go into my craft room. Hoping for some inspiration on most days. And people do ask where I do get my inspiration from. Um, because inspiration, well, that's very, very powerful. And it has the ability to ignite and encourage. And inspiration, well, that comes from, from many different sources. If we just take a look around us, there are lots of things that can inspire us and people can have a big impact as well. There's lots of things that inspire me to be creative. There's other people, there's nature, there's flowers. We do have so much beauty around us if we would only stop, look and listen. Dementia has also inspired me because it's given me the opportunity to try new things, to be creative and to use my imagination. Well, hopefully I'm inspiring others. I'm not one for just sitting back. I'm not going to let dementia take over, not yet anyway. I try so hard to find ways of adapting just so I can carry on living and living my life in a positive way. And I like to share my positivity with others because I am hoping to inspire others to keep their brains working by keeping occupied and finding things that they want to do like crafts and outdoor activities. Over the last few years, I have done all sorts of crafts and I've shared on Zoom and social media. And yes, I am learning new skills whilst living with dementia and so are many other people. I do like to keep my brain occupied now and I will have a go at anything because it's all about trying. How do you know if you like something or not if you don't give it a go? And how do you know if you can do something or not if you don't give things a try? Crafting with others, well, that creates great interaction and stimulation and so much positivity. And most of all, it brings happiness smiles and enjoyment. It's so very interesting that most of my crafts started after my diagnosis of dementia. And I, I wish people would look at all the positives that there are in a person that's living with dementia or any disability, because there's so many positives. We need to change and highlight the things that people can do. No one needs reminding of what they can't do. 
we might not be as quick to learn, but does that matter? And the process might have to be repeated over and over again, possibly quite a few times, but does that matter? Videos and recordings come in really, really useful because you can watch them, pause them and rewind them as many times as you like. And I always say, don't raise your voice and don't take over because we're not going to learn. Involve us, be patient and we will learn. Crafting shared with others brings people together. Watch people come alive, it's amazing. And to create and craft is so beneficial for our well-being. It reduces stress. It alleviates the symptoms of anxiety. It helps with the feeling of loneliness and it keeps our brains active. And the feeling of achievement when you have made something, well, that's a real feeling factor. I also purchased a camera um, after being inspired by Wendy. And I took some advice from Wendy on, on which camera to purchase. And the camera took me into the outdoor world of nature. And this is a place which is so calming and so special. It's like being in a different world and time seems to stand still. And the thing is, I'm consumed with the beautiful sound of birdsong because the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Well, that's just forgotten. And the best thing of all, I don't feel like I have dementia. I'm just carried along with the beautiful backdrop of nature. And I've been so very, very lucky to encounter some very special moments with, with the wild birds as they seem to trust me. Now I literally have them feeding out of my hand. And I have a little robin which comes to feed out of my hand quite regularly. And I'm in the process of training another one on our local nature reserve. But it's moments like this when I just come, become totally fixated and I've completely shut out the rest of the world. And I always try to capture moments like this, either on my camera or my phone, which is a task and a half because I have Toby on his lead next to me as well. <laughs> It's moments like these that I need to hold on to. And my camera has also become quite useful in other ways too, because it's now my memory. I can capture my walks and I can keep them and I can relive them whenever I want to repeatedly. And it's just wonderful. You don't need an expensive camera to take photos. You can capture wonderful things and memories and videos on a mobile phone and photos have also become an inspiration for me to paint and sketch and I can now capture the moment through the eye of a lens and turn it into a piece of art and painting and sketching has been a whole new venture for me I had never painted I've never sketched until about three years ago when I was invited join a zoom meeting and i was reluctant to join because my art teacher at school said i was useless but the art sessions i joined were held by a wonderful lady called francis who also had a diagnosis of dementia and she inspired me to paint and i was amazed at how quickly i caught on to the watercolor painting and now i had found another way to relax and I was producing drawings and paintings. I would get immersed in the painting and the sketch and just lose myself. Time just passed. Before I know it, a morning's gone and an afternoon's passed and dementia has disappeared because I'm concentrating on a piece of art and not what dementia was throwing at me that day. Art also brings out a creative side I didn't even know existed and I express myself on how dementia makes me feel. Here are some of my expressive sketches. And the one at the top you can see there's a 
a face um, that's quite calm and a face that's screaming inside. And that's how I sometimes feel some days when dementia tries to take over. We have foggy days where the hand is coming through the fog. Um, I just want to get out of the other side. And then there's the, the one at the bottom in the corner there. And that's the person that hides behind a mask. And I think lots of us hide behind a mask. We all put a front on. And then the last one where I'm behind an eye trying to get out. I feel like I, I'm in prison. And I feel like sometimes dementia has put me in prison. So I started to express how I was feeling. But other ways I express myself was poetry. I found comfort in words. And it can be quite therapeutic to write things down and how you feel. I even keep a, a blog now. And that helps because it's like a diary. I write things down and it can reduce the feelings and emotions that I carry inside. So many people living with dementia have found their love of arts and crafts. And regular crafting activities is a form of mindfulness. Well, it is for me. It helps to slow me down. And letting the arts and crafts ab absorb my attention. Because crafting can be so absorbing as my attention is focused on the craft and not my dementia. So naturally, I become relaxed. I do hope that I may have inspired you to try a craft. We're all different, we're all unique. Find the positives, because we always have hope. Thank you for listening to me. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Gail. Um, I want to share, if I may, today's picture that you put on Twitter, because I think it's absolutely phenomenal. I just, I wonder if you could just talk us through it, Gail. What we yeah. looking at? The, the, this is uh, um, uh, an image of a brain. So we've got the one side that looks like the brain and then we've got the cogs because we need to keep everything um, going. And I think people forget that we do need to look after our brains and they do need plenty of sleep and exercise and obviously nourishment. And this is what I put on Twitter today just to remind people to to look after the brains because we don't think about the brain really and it's very important it's such a fantastic image and that's where we sort of started our connection because um you you post these amazing images on twitter and and i i've been like liking them going oh this is amazing this is amazing and then i think i contacted you and said is there any chance i could share some of your images in our newsletter and, and thankfully you said yes and you sent me some amazing images and then I think I said, is there any chance you'd come on and have a little chat with us? And you said, yes. Yeah. So that's why we're here today, which is lovely. Um, so just a thought. So if you have any questions that you want to ask Gail, now is the time. So pop them into either the chat or in the question um, and we'll pick them up. But it, from, your, from your talk, Gail, it does sound like creativity has been an important part of all of your life because, you know, your business was based around creativity. But obviously it's grown um, since your diagnosis of dementia and become such a massive part. It's, you gave the impression that it's a good eight hour shift that you pull in in that craft room every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like to, um, like, like I said in the talk, I always start the day with a walk because I think that's the best way to start the, the day, getting some fresh air. And then the rest of the day I can do what I want. Um, so crafting, um, it kills the boredom. Um, more than anything if I've nothing to do that day I'm off into the craft room but I do like to do a painting or a sketch every single day because I believe it's going to keep my brain active by, by doing that so yeah it's really important to me now fantastic we've got a question from Diane thank you for a brilliant talk what was the turning point for you that lifted your depression and made you realize that you've still got a lot of life to live I think for me, obviously, the, sh the shock of the diagnosis, um, but um, I've always been a, a tough cookie. I don't like I don't like anybody to think that I can't do something. If somebody tells me I can't do it, even as a young child, um, you can't do that. I would have a go and, and do it. And I think it's my mindset more than anything. Um, and sitting at home, not doing anything is not like me. 
So I think that's where I thought, I can't do this. This is not me. I can't just sit here and let everything take over. Um, I'm a fighter, so I've got to fight back. And I did. Um, but I just think that that's me. I mean, we're all different. Some people might not want to fight, but I'm a fighter, so, yeah. I'm being interrupted by a dog who wants to sit <laughs> on my knee, and she's not a small dog, Gail, so we won't let her on there. Um, <laughs> I wondered, you know, when you talked about when you first got your diagnosis and you said that friends and neighbours um, stopped talking to you. And I just wondered if we could have a think about that, um, because it's not a story. It's a story that I've heard time and time again from people living with dementia um, or caregivers, that people sort of drift away from them. And I just wondered if you had any thoughts on, on why. Why does that happen? Yeah, it, it, it's funny because, I mean, uh, um a particular neighbour um, found out that I had dementia from another neighbour, and every time I came to the out into the front garden, she disappeared in the house. Anyway, after a couple of weeks, I thought I'm not having this, so I went across and said good morning, and <laughs> be rather shocked. Um, and she she said, oh, I'm, uh, um, uh, I believe you, and I'm really sorry to hear that you have dementia. And I said, don't be sorry, because I'm still me. <laughs> I'm I'm still the same person, and I I think it's it's quite frightening for people. They don't know what to say to you. It's like any day if you're diagnosed with anything, cancer or somebody's died, or um, you don't know what to say to that person. But just being yourself and having a normal conversation on what you speak about normally um, is a great relief, rather than somebody sort of skirting round. Um, and being embarrassed um, I think it's the fear factor as well everybody thinks that once you get a diagnosis that you automatically go to those end stages where I'm going to be sat in a care home somewhere or in the corner of, a, of my living room but I'm at the beginning of my journey um, so there's going to be a beginning and a bit in the middle before I start to deteriorate um, and there's things changing all the time, but I just think it's it's scary for some people because um, they do, they automatically think that you've jumped to that end stage because you've got your diagnosis. Yeah, and I suppose if you don't have any experience of people with dementia, or if it, or if your only experience is of like people at an end stage, then that is going to be your your thought process. And I don't think the media or even Alzheimer's society helps because the images that they put out I said I wasn't going to let the dog sit on my knee and <laughs> do very well with that oh, good job. um the, the images they put out are of old people you know there there are of people with advanced dementia or old sort of fragile looking people um which isn't helpful for young people living trying to live as well as they can with dementia no it's it, it, it's very strange because when I was diagnosed, both me and my husband were shocked because I was only 54. And I, I didn't know anything about dementia before I was diagnosed. So I automatically thought I'm guilty here because I automatically thought it was only older people that got dementia. And I think that's because of the advertisements that's out there. Um, and th there is a stigma ag about dementia, but uh, we need to change that. We definitely do. And I think talks like this are really helpful. Um, Cassie has said, that was fabulous and really inspiring. Cassie's a bit of a crafter as well. With my occupational therapist hat on, I wondered if you had any support um, to figure out what was most important to you. I think there's a massive role for OTs, occupational therapists, working with younger people with dementia. Um, yeah, I saw the occupational therapist. She came to my house when I had a... a got the diagnosis and that is the only contact that I've had with an occupational therapist and she walked into my house um looked around and said you're coping very well you don't need me and left <laughs> and that's that's the only time I've seen an occupational therapist and that's because my house was clean so if my house hadn't have been clean and tidy would have not have been coping very well but little did she know that it had taken me a full day to clean that house because I don't want people coming into my house and finding it a mess. 
So what, yeah. what would have been more helpful then from the occupational therapist? Because in a way, she sort of validated and went, "Well, you've done a good job there, Gail. Crack on." Yeah, I, what I think you wanted taking the time and, and maybe visiting again at a later date because obviously things are changing all the time. From my diagnosis to now, things have changed. So now I am struggling with things, but the occupational therapist doesn't know that because she's never contacted me. Yeah, so that's sort of, you get one visit and that's it. You know, it should be yeah. that check in with people that throughout. Yeah, so, oh, I, I noticed that you might need a little bit more help here. I wonder, let's have a conversation about that. Cassie has come back on it and she said, I wish I was surprised by that, Gail. Cassie, we can change the world. Okay, Chris has said, since you got your diagnosis, I've watched your confidence grow and flourish. You're now, uh, you now enable so many people to get on with their life. You have proved to so many that you can, that they can, and it is possible to do. So important to dwell on the positives. You are so uplifting and inspiring. And that's from Chris. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at taking nice comments. <laughs> Got a bit giggly then, Gail. You're like, oh. <laughs> yes, thank like you this. very much. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, so, uh, you know, we talked about you've talked a bit about social media. You've got 2,700 followers on Twitter, and you're pumping out picture after picture after picture, which is just absolutely amazing. Um, you've actually you did show me an inspirational picture that you drew over the weekend. Nobody else has seen it yet, only family and, and me. So are we allowed to show it? I'll show it. <laughs> it, it will be I saw going it on. here first. It will be yes. going on social media. Oh, but this is my, I um, don't know if you can see him there. You can see it really well. Island cow, so, which is done with an ink pen. Um, yeah, I drew that with an ink pen. Sunday afternoon, yes, which took me hours. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's I'll beautiful. Look at it. Yeah, love it. Have you got it's just so calming? Have you got one that you you know? Do you love ink pens or watercolors or photography or is it a bit of everything that you love? Oh, I think it's a bit of everything. I, I mean, I try all sorts. Um, I have have one here, um, and this was done with watercolors and a straw, and okay. you put the paint on, and then you blow with the straw, and it takes the paint wherever. So it's just keep your fingers crossed and hope for the best. Um, yeah so there's all sorts of my, my photographs um i just love photography as well that's one of a of a lily which i took wow it's beautiful. Um, and that was taken with my phone they're not all taken with my camera and this one of a deer um i don't know if you can see that yeah i can see it. it's um, fantastic we went into a, a caravan like a lodge thing in the lakes and we opened the door and there were these deer outside it was amazing so yeah but uh, yeah i just love to try anything um i think i've had a go i, I was i did a, a pottery um my daughter's paid and we went and did a pottery course um, on a potter's wheel so I had to go at that the other weekend which wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be but I did make a sort of a dish which is waiting to be fired and then I can paint it but yeah it's not brilliant but yeah I did it so but I just like it, it's all about trying because you don't know unless you do it so yeah I've, I've had a, a go at anything um I know when I, I lost um, my first Scottish Terrier at, um, about oh, about four or five years ago now, um, out of his blanket, I made a teddy bear and he's got his collar on there. Um, so still smells like him as well. So, yeah, so I made a teddy of him. So I just, I just try everything. The only thing I can't do is I can't knit very well or crochet very well. Um, but I've had a go. And you're acing it at everything else. So they, those, when you were showing the photos, they were mounted. Has that been to an exhibition? Um, there was um, put up in the in the local park. Um, they have a, a, a room in, in, in the park where they have meetings for things. And a lady that does a photography um, group there for disabled people, um, there was 
she was doing a, a display and she said would I take some along so yeah so I took one or two along yeah yeah it's good I like to be involved that's really good um I mean you are massively active on social media and I just wondered how you know obviously you're putting things out to the to the wider world how helpful is that to you um social media now to I never used to go on social media before well the odd time before I got dementia number one it was the time factor I was working full time um well more than full time uh, but um now it connects me with people people that have dementia um so yeah it's like peer support um you're getting support from one another discussing things so yes yeah, it's, it's really important is social media to me it's the first thing i do actually when i get up in the morning i make a cup of tea and i'm straight on social media posting my photos or <laughs> putting a piece of artwork on there and then obviously you you, you you're asking questions on people's statuses and, and what they're up to and making sure people are all right and yeah hopefully i think what we do is we inspire one another uh, to to do things and I think so social media yeah it's 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 very good for connecting I know another person who puts a lot on Twitter Wendy and then you mentioned yeah. Wendy earlier and obviously you've got you know Wendy posts loads of photos amazing photos of wildlife on hair walks so it feels there's a natural connection between you and Wendy yeah when Wendy came over for a, a visit to um not that long ago and we went to the places where where i like to walk um and we took photographs together and it's funny we didn't talk much because obviously we were taking the photographs and what really su surprised us both is when we take a photograph when we're concentrating if we see a bird and we're concentrating on that bird we don't breathe <laughs> and then after it's like <laughs> because I think what it is we don't want to miss what it is that we're taking and we both do it which was quite comical really um but yeah we both have a love for photography and, and the outdoors we both love walking Wendy walks a lot more than me um but yeah it's uh, it's nice to have something in common with somebody as as well so yeah that's good was that a connection through Twitter or was that through Deep or, or both? Actually, both? Um, I came together with, with Wendy um, through lockdown because um, Deep were doing a lot of groups where you could join in. Um, and I'd, I think I, I, I joined a Zoom meeting listening to Wendy talk about her first book. Um, and then the deep sort of wrote me into doing other things like they do. <laughs> and and that's how I got to know Wendy. Um, yeah. And a lot of other people, you know, there's uh, there's lots of people that I've met through the deep network. I think we've got Chris on today supporting you. Yeah. And <laughs> um, you mentioned your blog earlier. So will you tell us a little bit about your blog? How, you know, what 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 does your blog mean to you? How do you use that platform? Um, my blog started off um, as like a diary. So that I, had, I had something to look back on. Um, so I can see what I've done on a certain day or how I was that year up to now. Um, and also it shows all the positive things that I've done um how many sort of talks and meetings that i've gone to and and how my head's been and so i can look back at that but it also helps me um to offload in a way i'm offloading how i'm feeling that day if i'm having a bad day i will say i'm having a bad day i don't gloss over it um and if i'm having a good day i'll tell you i'm having a good day um but yeah, it helps. I think writing anything down helps to to just get because we we carry a lot with us. We all do. So just writing it down and saying how you feel, it's like a release. So yeah, means and, a lot. To my blog. Do you get sort of positive feedback or comments on your blog? Or is um, that a bit different? It's it's a little bit different. I did did have a, a moment um, a couple of months ago where. Um, yeah it wasn't becoming a positive um 
area for me to be in uh, because I've been accused of not having dementia. Um, so many of us that, that can speak and that can do things do get accused of not having dementia. And so I took a step back and pulled away from social media, doing my blog. I didn't do anything. Um, but that's, again, it's not me. It's not who I am. And to, to, to pull back and think, well, I don't want to be in the public eye anymore was a wrong thing to do. Because when I came back, I'd forgotten how to do my blog. So I've had to relearn how to do all this again. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. I might be writing, but they don't know how long it takes me to write. I might be doing my artwork. They don't know how long it's taken me to do that. They don't see me on a bad day. So, yeah, so, yeah, I'll carry on doing my blog because it, it, it is what it is. I'm, I'm glad that you came back to that and didn't let that person or whoever it was sort of win because I think there is, you know, we're – People are taught, have the mantra, it's possible to live well with dementia. But then if you live it a little bit too well, then other people are going to have a say about that. And yeah. that just seems yeah. unfair. Yeah. Um, Diane's written, I'm a carer for my mum who's had dementia for about 15 years. I've learnt, I've learnt so much from her and about myself over that time. Do you have any advice for family carers? Patience, I suppose, which can sometimes be hard. I've never been in that situation where um, I've had to care for anybody with dementia. But um, I, I keep saying to my husband, I know it's going to get difficult at some point. Um, we're, it's not going to be a fairy tale ending, <laughs> as, as some portray fairy tales. Um, it is going to be hard, but listening to to the person that's got dementia i think is is a big thing you you've got to listen to us if we can't communicate we might be trying uh, to communicate by um hand gestures or crying or screaming and i always think that if if a person is um um i can't think of the word upset about anything or agitated there's got to be something that's causing that. So we need to find out why they, they, they're doing that, um, which if, if they can't communicate, must be so difficult. But um, it's like I said to my husband, I've started writing a book, um, not to publish a book, but a little book with notes in. Um, things like my dislikes and my likes, because if I can't communicate, how does anybody know what I'm going to like and what I'm, I, I dislike? So I can't stand simple little things, my back to be cold. So if I'm sat in a chair and my back's cold, I will create because I need my back covering up. But if people don't know that, how do they know? So I'm writing a little book now with all little notes of things, what I like and what I don't like. So hopefully it might be easier. Um, I'm just, for anyone that's not from Lancashire, create means kicking off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just thought I needed to say that because obviously we have been talking about creativity <laughs> and crafts. <laughs> so it's very different to what we've been talking about. So just so you know, that's, yeah. if Gail's back gets cold, she's going to kick off. <laughs> Got a book about it we haven't we haven't really talked about um your family and sort of what role they've had in inspiring you and keeping you positive um my, my mum and dad well they're both in their 80s um and so when i got my diagnosis to actually sort of tell them that my diagnosis was dementia was um well it was a a shock um my mum asked me how long I had to live and my dad couldn't speak to me um, because I suppose you don't expect your son or your daughter to turn up and say, I've got dementia. Um, yeah, so I, I suppose that were tough for my parents because I am an only one as well. Um, but my daughters have been so supportive and my husband's been so supportive so it's 
it's all about learning because we're, we're learning something different every day um as things change we we try to adapt things um yeah it's just about not letting it upset you if something sort of happens um like i'm really good at burning myself on on, on the oven because i forget it's hot it's finding a way around it so now if there's anything to go in the oven my husband puts it in the oven i don't have anything to do with the oven um yeah it's adapting to to different things and it's accepting that somebody might have to sort of take over but um yeah my daughters have been really supportive they've been they've been good but they don't live close by so i think that's a good thing sometimes <laughs> um yeah the only thing i do miss i must say is um playing with my grandchildren like i used to do i can't do that because i with seven grandchildren so um if they were up they can't all come on the same day because no we can't do with that um the noise is just too much um so i don't the, the smaller ones I'm, I'm not very good with the smaller ones now because of the screaming and the crying and the noise factor the older ones i'm okay but i do sometimes feel a little bit guilty because i can't do what i used to do with them i think that's the only the only thing that really upsets me is that I'm not the grandma that I used to be when I used to have them all day and look after them. Um, so yeah, and I suppose my daughters miss that, but the uh, again, we adapt. Yeah, I think that's really important to share that, Gail, just, you know, cause you think, oh yeah, I have all the grandkids around. There's only seven of them. Yeah, it'll be a bit noisy, yeah. but actually a bit noisy if yeah. you've not got dementia compared to if you do have dementia and just yeah. that noise and the busyness and it's I mean it's hectic isn't it it is it is yeah it's just too much if if they come for a morning and the, there's two of them and they're running around by afternoon I'm absolutely shattered um and I, I, I think that's another thing people don't realize that when you've got dementia your brain's working much much harder so um simple things tie out so quickly um i suppose that's why i like walking with nature because it's so peaceful so yeah it's so calming yeah away from screaming grandchildren <laughs> <laughs> on our courses we often sort of get people to think that you know if you live in dementia like being involved in in a sort of a small party experience where you've got a few people go you know chatting and there's lots of things happen it's like running a marathon um, you know you're gonna be that exhausted because yeah. that quite often people would say oh we had like it was really good there we we're brilliant for two hours but it came back just went to sleep in the in in the in the armchair and you're going yeah because they're exhausted they've just put so much into yeah. into yeah. those two hours yeah. you can't even imagine yeah yeah P people don't realize that that we, we do get tired out it's like brain overload um and we do have really bad bad days with with the as as head and for me um a, a bad day well um i woke up this morning and my head was all and i'm thinking no not today <laughs> we'll go a walk um but it's you can't focus properly um you can't um think properly N nothing sort of makes sense in a way everything's sort of jumbled and yeah so it's it's quite dif difficult to to get through but you know you never know whether it's going to last an hour a couple of hours a day um yeah it, it varies uh so yeah sometimes it, it it's tough but um uh, again you just have to get on with it really and even when you're like that, you get out with the dog every morning. Uh, I'm normally out every, every morning. If I, if, if I am like that, um, I might only go a short walk. And I normally stay close to home so that I know that I'm not going to wander off and get lost anywhere. But I might just go around the block a couple of times um, if I'm like that. There's only the odd time that I don't go out when I'm like that. And that's when I'm really bad. But yeah, most days. And just for any anyone who might not know, is that does that is there any pattern? Does that follow like a really busy day the day before? Or it's just like you don't know. 
well sometimes I don't know but but most times if I've been busy last week I was really busy doing a lot of talks and by the end of the week I was like fit for nothing it was like total exhaustion um um, and the head and, and and the thing for me when I get the fuzzy heads it makes me feel nauseous and the, the balance goes off a little bit um yeah it's just it's horrible if the, if there's one thing I hate that is it um I can cope pretty much with everything else but the the bad foggy days I absolutely hate them hmm. I think Wendy talks about like it's like your head's full of cotton wool yeah yeah so that's that sort of weird not quite yeah that, that clarity is not there for you yeah yeah thank you for sharing that we're in our last few minutes and thank you i'm i'm glad that the walk this morning worked and that we were <laughs> able to have this conversation from a very selfish perspective so thank you for that if you've got any questions or anything that you want to ask gail now's your opportunity um before we all go off and put the kettle on and have a cup of tea so this is your chance now to to ask anything. I found this fantastic, Gail. We we were laughing earlier because I because you said you didn't know what I look like, and I said we well, haven't got curly hair anymore because all your photos of curly hair. So I, I wouldn't have ever recognised you with this great <laughs> hair. I know. My husband said the other week, "Do you not think it's about time you change that photograph?" Because my hair was like that when I got diagnosed. Um, it maybe the dementia's made it straight. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but um, yeah, I, and I said, no, I can't change that photo because everybody knows that photo of me with curly hair, so I'm not changing the photo, um, but yeah, the hair is growing, so yeah, I'm growing it, to, yeah, and the longer it goes, the straighter it goes, or it sort of goes frizzy and, and goes, um, yeah, but yeah, but uh, yeah, I like a change. <laughs> change is good. It is. <laughs> It means that you can walk around without people like actually knowing you. She looks a bit like Gail Gregory, but it can't be her because she's got <laughs> short curly hair. It must be somebody yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, well, I used to be a hairdresser as well in my younger days. So, yeah, I do, I've do. i done all sorts with my hair over the years. So I think my, my family and friends are used to the changes. <laughs> as we've got on to talking about hair, we've probably come to a natural ending for our, for our webinar today. So, Gail... Huge thanks. I'm sure everyone else will um, drop them in there, but it has been been inspirational. I love your artwork. I love how you share it on social media. Um, yeah, so thank you just so much for giving me your time today and also for emailing me all those pictures so I can keep them on, put them in the newsletter and also for my wonderful Christmas cards that I've just pulled. Oh, well, that was my last question for you, Gail. How How's your fundraiser going? Um, it's it's sort of slowed down, so I could do with it picking up a little bit because obviously I'm I'm raising funds for Dementia UK uh, by selling my artwork and and some um, some cards. So yeah, I feel like I need to bring the cards back on at that point and go. <laughs> these amazing handcrafted cards are available at a snip of a price, and they delivered to your doorstep so we've yeah. had Barbara saying thank you so much you're amazing Diane said thank you so much for sharing and being so open about your experience yeah oh, thank you oh. Gail I'm gonna let you get off now and put the kettle on yeah and it looks like you've got a bit of sunshine over there so who knows yeah. you might get out for another walk I might do yes All thank right. you Take so care. much for inviting me thank you you're very welcome and let's keep chatting yes <laughs> all right take care everyone bye